Hey there, race fans. I'm Mitch Carr coming to you from Durham, North Carolina, home of the Bulls. And if you don't believe me, just check out this guy over my shoulder. That's right. The Bulls are the AAA affiliate of your Tampa Bay Rays. And I'm going to talk today about one of the guys you might be seeing in Tampa Bay later this season. He's actually a hometown boy. But you're not going to find him on any of the Baseball America Top 100 lists because he's not a prospect anymore. He's already made his Major League debut. Christian Royo came up with the Giants last season, and then he came over from the Giants system to the Rays system thanks to the Evan Longoria trade. Arroyo is actually from the Tampa Bay area. He's from Brooksville, about 90 minutes north of Tropicana Field. And when he does make it back to the major leagues this season, he's going to be playing in front of the hometown family and friends. I started off by asking him where he's more comfortable on the diamond. Is it shortstop or is it third base? Uh, you know, I've played so much third the past two years. I'd say third's become a lot more comfortable. Short's always kind of been the most comfortable for me just because it's natural, but I'm really comfortable at all three. I mean, I try to pride myself on being comfortable at all three. That way, if I'm put into a situation where I have to go in at any time, it's it's like, it's 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 your routine. It's it's normal. Are they playing you at second base too? Not here, not yet. Uh, I did in spring, just kind of throwing it out there. Same thing here. They, they, they stress versatility a lot, but I've really been playing third every single game I played in. I played one game at short and then DH a couple times. So um, I think for now that's kind of the spot is third, obviously with Willie at short and then uh, Kean playing a little bit of second. Um, and then, I mean, we've got uh, Andrew Velasquez. He's in the outfield, but he also plays short, second and third. Um, we just have a bunch of versatile guys on this team. So it's really easy to kind of throw guys in, in different spots. No, I mean, you've got something that a lot of these guys don't have, which is you've already made your major league debut. You mm -hmm. got some major league service time. Mm -hmm. um, what What do you tell these guys who are just, they're on the doorstep and they yeah. can't wait? What do you tell them about that, that experience? I mean, really, you know, and, and I try not to talk in a sense of like I'm a veteran guy because we've got Brandon Snyder, Jason Coates, Jeremy Hazel Baker. You know, we've got uh, Vidal Nuno. We've got a bunch of guys on our roster right now that, that have had quality big league time and have done some great things in the big leagues so I kind of leave that stuff to them but you know just friend to friend I just you know the, the biggest thing that I realized was it's the same game but you just got to be consistent you got to be yourself and you just got to stick to what you've been doing you know it's it's easy to go up there and, and want to do more and want to do more and and you know you're playing in front of a bunch of eyes now and you want to be obviously everyone's goal is to be an all-star if not a hall of famer eventually one day and Really, I mean, the talent, the hard work will take care of itself. So you just got to go up there and trust your abilities and have fun. That's another thing is having fun. You know, no matter how bad it's going or good, you know, these are the best days of your life. So when you're up there, you can't, you take an over. I mean, yeah, it's tough, but you got to remember, you're now considered one of these elite players that has the opportunity to play in the big leagues. We're also playing against pitchers that are the elite pitchers of the world. So it's a grind every day and it's mental, but that's why you got to kind of figure out how to relax and reset and then, get back in there and get after it the next day and keep grinding. Well, I know it can be disappointing to be traded, but to be traded to your hometown team, I wonder what the emotion was like to say, yeah. oh man, like the Giants are, are gonna go with, go in another direction here. Mm -hmm. but man, I get a chance to play for my hometown no, team. No, exactly, hit the nail on the head. I mean, you know, gr getting drafted by a team, obviously uh, developing with the team and then making making your debut with the same team that developed you was huge. I mean, they, the Giants always stress that homegrown infield, that homegrown uh, farm system in general, but uh, you know it was, an, it was an honor to to be able to be one of those homegrown guys. Um, it just happened to be we had a rough year, and when you have rough years, you got to make tough decisions. You got to make moves. So uh, they got a phenomenal veteran player in Evan Longoria. I mean, I grew up watching. He's one of my favorite Rays. Uh, him along with like Rocco Baldelli and Carl Crawford and BJ Upton. Those guys were like the guys that I always used to watch every day. So. Um, you know, getting to see him and, and, and uh, getting to see him on the West Coast back. I know he, he's from out there, so it might be a little different for him just kind of being back on the West Coast, just like how I'm coming back to the East Coast. But, uh, you know, it's different. It, it's, 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 it's weird not being on the West Coast. I'm so used to Arizona and Scottsdale and San Jose and Sacramento. But, uh, but no, be, getting to be on the East Coast where my family can see me and they can take a two-hour flight to see me play and same time zone and even uh, – getting to the big leagues and getting to live at my own house is going to be huge. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, along those lines, what's the timetable? Have they told you anything like that? No, no. I mean, it's just kind of a uh, same thing. You just got to play well and you just got to just got to keep developing. I mean, there's really no timetable. They don't they don't really tell you much. It's just it's all business. So um, you don't really hear much like that. And you just you try not to focus on it. You just try to play your game and and, you know, have fun and enjoy where you're playing, because if 
if you're not enjoying where you're playing, it's gonna it's tough to, to push the issue because if you're not genuinely happy with where you are, then it's tough to go out there every day, compete and and, and do what you want to do. So you know, for me, it's it's about focusing on where I am now in Durham, helping this team win, and then you know, if I'm playing well, and then they decide to give me that call, then go on to the next level, go to Tampa, and then help them win in Tampa. Well, I, I know what you, you just said, you know, maybe someday being up in the big leagues, but having already spent a month or two up mm -hmm. there, you've got to expect that the call is going to come at some point. You're going to get to play in front of the hometown mm -hmm. fans at some point. You, you really can't expect much because so much could happen. I mean, the injuries happen, and, and I mean, guys play well. If Duffy's, Duffy's raking and Echeverria is raking and Wendell's raking, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard. You can't really justify getting a, another guy in there if the team's playing well. And as of now, every single guy in the infield is playing really well. So... There's no, there's really no need for the guys that are down here now. I mean, even though it doesn't matter, you've got a bunch of great players. It's just the business side of it, really. I mean, uh, you know, Joey Wendell's having a phenomenal year. Dave, D. Rob's having a, a great year. I mean, he's he's changed, he's changed his whole approach, and he looks phenomenal at the play. Echeverria has been playing great. He's a phenomenal defender. He's been swinging it. Matt Duffy's been doing the same thing. He's just been spraying the ball over the field like he usually does. So, you know. Coming from a player standpoint, you can't really expect much. It's a business, and you just gotta enjoy where you are and play, play as hard as you can. Do you have any techniques to stay focused, though? Because I, I just imagine having already been up there and, and knowing how close you are, it can be easy for your mind to wander. But you seem to have been able to, to put it out of your head. Not really. I mean, just playing, just hanging out with these guys. Really. I mean, it's easy because JB's my roommate on the road, and Willie, and Squid, Andrew, Velasquez. Key and we're all like the same age, so we all kind of do the same thing. Our big thing now is we play all play Fortnite, so just playing <laughs> Fortnite and that kind of helps pass the time. So Fortnite. Now yeah. uh, I've never played it before. Tell me about it. Uh, it's everyone drops in about 100 people. You got to pick up your weapons and you got to be the last one. You're trying to you're trying to pick up that victory royale, you know. So uh, you can squad up and play solos, duos, whatever you want. But you know that's kind of like our team bonding. We all squad up on Fortnite. We play Fortnite together. That's how you stay out of trouble, right? Yeah, oh, 100%. So there you go, Christian Arroyo, one of the prospects you probably will be seeing at some point in Tampa Bay this season. He's being patient right now. He's playing a lot of Fortnite. Hopefully he's going to have a lot of four-hit nights and end up with the Rays. In Durham, North Carolina, I'm Mitch Carr.